Hello there, my fellow governors, Rodamont here. Thank you for tuning in to Against the Storm, Keepers of the Stone. Episode 6, Synergy in the Flock. So, a merchant shipwreck. I can, um... So, hostility ramps up a lot when trying to search the lower deck. Or I can search the upper deck, but I would need boots or coats for it. But it does give me an impatience point doing that. It gives me a lot of food, though, but, like, I don't really want to ramp up impatience for no reason. Um, there is packs of roots over there, but that's not good enough. So I think I'm going to send these to the Citadel. And there's pawns, but I don't really want algae. So I'm not going to worry about that either. All right, woodcutters, just avoid glades. So I'll probably end up um, searching the lower deck here, but I'm going to wait until next drizzle season because I don't need my hostility going up by 220 right before a storm. Because this takes four and a half minutes, but clearance only lasts th four. So there's not enough time to do it before the storm hits me. So it'd be complete and utter suicide doing it. Uh, whoop, wrong button. You wanted Smokehouse. All right, next up. Um, Tavern Temple Guildhouse. So, uh, before we pick our first service, because all three of those are services, uh, we should consider for the tavern. I don't know how to make beer, and I don't know how to make wine. For the temple. Incense and uh, scrolls? I do know how to make both, I think, right? Incense I make at the smokehouse. Scrolls I make at three different places, but uh, most efficiently at the artisan. So, um, the temple I can fully supply with their trade goods, and that would benefit beavers like education, harpies like education, and uh, incense is liked by whom? Humans. So they would only benefit from the education. But it's something. And then the guild house is wine. Don't know how to make that. And education. By beavers and harpies. So it's up to you. But temple and guild house are two things I can supply. And then maybe... Maybe I get a blueprint for... So it kind of comes down to... The benefit... You know what? I'm just going to pick Guildhouse because it supplies... Both sides can be beneficial. Ooh. The other question is the... Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to pick Guildhouse. It's the more logical choice. So let's plop a Guildhouse here. It requires a lot of planks. So we're going to have to be planking a bunch, but... Their passives are even more important. Normally I would agree, but supplying services is also really important too, in my opinion. Especially if, like, not having those services kill you, because that's actually true in some cases. Okay, the abandoned cash is sent to the crown. Um, we have a lot of the provisions for the Citadel prepared. I'm really low on... Um, oh, there's nothing to use that. I'm really low on food, and like I'm not finding good spots for food. And I also don't know how to grow my own food. So it's a bit of a problem. Uh, loyalty or empathy? So loyalty is like fulfilling the crown's requirements and empathy is um, doing nice things. Sometimes they're they're usually mutually, mutually exclusive. I think what I'll do here, I, I see that you guys are trying to starve me out and honestly, it's gonna work. I just don't have sources of food, like at all. I can't collect any of this. Like, literally, there's nothing to eat. It's crazy. 
Oh, that's not entirely true. I could pick at this, um, Strider here. Um... The, the, the only problem with that is the Strider is so far away from a hearth that, like, working there sucks, because it's, like, so far flung. Um... I think as a result, I'm gonna, like, panic and cut into these two small glades, because I need something to eat. You guys want Lost in the Woods or Gifts to the Queen? It was a tie. So I'll do Lost in the Woods. Alright, that sucked. There's... I guess there's grain to collect, but that we can't eat raw grain. Oh boy. And, oh, here we go. There's, uh, Leech Brood Mothers, uh, that will work. It's not a lot of food, but it's a stopgap. Alright, let's move this woodcutter a little bit. Cut the two remaining trees out of the way so that I can build a, a valid path. And then... With this trader, I'm probably going to end up buying as much raw food as possible just to keep aloft. I don't need this much wildfire essence. So... I'm just going to buy... Mushrooms. Roots. Insects. Not gonna be able to afford it all. Um, sell some stone. Sell some bricks. Because I have access to a lot of bricks and stone. That's not so serious. There. Yeah. Yeah. And then the value of the goods sold, I hit a 45. Oh, but that adds more people. That's a problem. Um, I'll do that if I need the... I'll fulfill that if I need the tools to open up a cache, but I'm going to hold off on that because I'm not ready to, like, make it that much more expensive for me to, um, to feed people. All right, let's aim for another glade that potentially has empathy decisions. There we go. And I can put people in the guild house. So we have a fully staffed guild house. And we'll start consuming. So in that case, I need to go to the artisan and start making scrolls. So that we can have scrolls on hand to fulfill our uh, education needs. Which ought to help out a little bit with um, resolve. Pretty close to rations for the Citadel. Uh, I already have Grain Line. Eh, I'll have you pick. I'm not producing mushrooms. And I don't accept a lot of settlers. So maybe Grain Line makes the most sense. Doubling the amount of grain that I import. And I did just unlock a, uh, a blueprint. Oh! Here we go. Uh... So the trapper's camp... 
Is there... Uh, the trapper's camp would allow us to start harvesting these large leech broodmothers for some serious meat. Um, and then the small farm or plantation allows us to use this fertile soil plot. But there's not a lot of soil plots. So I'll have you vote on that as well. Grain line. Got it. Okay. And then for here. I don't think small farm's helpful because I already am getting grain. And growing vegetables is kind of inefficient at the farm. So Trapper's Camp allows us to hit the big nodes. And Plantation allows us to grow berries. So I have you choose between those. Uh, packs of crops is already done. So stop making crops. And finish the delivered provisions. So we almost have Citadel rations for the Citadel done. Which is here. And that will give us porridge. That will keep us fed. Cheers. All right, let's bust in here. Snap Atomic. We're coming for you. All right, coal, copper, brick oven, abandoned cache, escaped convicts, coal vein... Uh, and lots of stone. Even more stone. It's unfortunate I keep getting stone, because, like, I don't need more stone. Like, continually, my, um, the benefit I get is just, like, stone, stone, stone. Alright, you guys wanted, oh, no, uh, blueprint. You guys wanted a trapper camp. Okay, cool. So once this trapper camp, once this trapper camp exhausts, I can move it over here and hit the, the higher yield one. Uh, there is a lot of raw food in this cache. So definitely hitting that. The brick oven, I don't really need. But the... Oh, I have weapons. Good. Uh, we can arrest the convicts and send them to the capital. Although I do get a benefit for empathy. Right? We have this, like, do empathy twice. So maybe I do the empathy. The problem with the empathy is there's a huge um, resolve cost doing empathy decision until it's done. So I need really, I need to time it right because it's going to kick up hostility really badly. So I have 12 and a half minutes to, to, to decide on that. All right, packs of crops. Done. Oh, there's even more stink bugs. What is going on in my office here? Oh, it fell. No, oh, it's gone. I don't know where it went. I think... The best thing we can do is to set up to crack into another glade, and maybe I do this Forbidden Glade. Sketchy! Because it's dangerous, but, yeah, maybe there'll be an empathy decision in there. Oh, I got a blueprint from High Resolve. Alright, have you choose. So Clothier doesn't, it gives me water skins, not super helpful because I can already make barrels and uh, pottery. A apothecary gives me tea and porridge. Um, tea is useful for harpies and porridge is useful for no one. It also gives me jerky, but I already have the ability to make jerky. And then the stamping mill um, makes bricks more efficiently. Um, but it's not as good as a rain mill and it's not as good as a smelter. So really, honestly, they're all bad options, but you can pick because I don't care. <laughs> How's that for an answer? Oh, right. I forgot about the shipwreck. Oh, no. That's not good. Um, so I'm going to lose a random cornerstone from forgetting to do that. 
I'm an idiot. Totally lapsed my mind. Okay, we're going on an apothecary. So with this apothecary, I can start making a uh, tea. If we get like a tea doctor or tea house or something like that to consume the tea in. It's probably going to destroy my um, fiber delivery line or grain delivery line. At least I have duplicates of it. All right, harvesters are out. There's no more harvesting locations, so I'll just sunset that down there. The abandoned medium cache, we are looting. Fiber delivery line just got nuked. So now that I lost that, um, what I need to do is to either search it or, yeah, I need to search it one way or the other. Um, I could start in a crude workstation. How much? Okay. I could start making pipes for that. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in some new people. So I'm going to fire up a whole bunch of smelters to make copper bars. And then in a makeshift workstation. Or where's my crude workstation? I never deleted it. It's right here. Um I'm gonna start making pipes. Uh, so we're going to try to neutralize this by searching it with 20 pipes. Oh, God, that's a big ask. Uh, do I have rewards for pipes? No, but I have rewards for tools. Okay, uh, that works. So I'll fulfill that. So uh, uh, I'm going to change my plans here a little bit. So the tools I just got from that um, that delivery, I can now search the deck. But now is not the right time. I'm going to wait till after the storm's over now is really high hostility. But I have the tools to search the deck. Maybe I should um, continue to make... I don't know how to make tools, never mind. But I'm smelting up the copper so that I have smelted copper available to me. Well, you know, the other issue is the time it takes to... Uh... Yeah, I'm going to have to arrest them. I can't deal with the working effect of persuading them, and there's not enough time to wait for the storm to o be over to persuade them. So I have to go with the arresting the convicts. No choice. Trapper camp, moving to the new location. And some last orders. So, fulfill pickled goods, skewers, and jerky. Or hand over tools and building materials. I have a bunch of homelessness because we just had a giant population boon. From all the, um, the people I pulled in. This mine is going to get exhausted pretty soon, so I should start to set up for a replacement. Alright, storm's over. Just about. So let's neutralize that. Because that's going to be resolve. Oh, look at that. Look at that hostility. Six. Oh, God. All right. Cornerstone. Um, Give me money. The rest suck. I'd like to buy roots, please. It's not going to happen. 
Oh, I can lower hostility by buying that book. I would like to buy that book. Okay. Cool. That's nice. I'll stole you down by 50. Alright, both of these events are being resolved. I'm trying to think of how I am going to... So, the order that you picked was... Building materials and tools? Oh, that's rough, because I don't know how to make tools. Uh, so the next one is fulfill jerky, pie, and skewers. Or building materials and trade goods. The reward for the this one is a bunch of tools, which then I could use to fulfill the other one, if you're trying to be nice. Big if. It's up to you, it's not up to me. Um, so I don't have a need for porridge, tea, and I'm already making jerky somewhere else better. But now we have a place to make tea if I end up with um, a building that consumes it. I still can't make wine, right? No. So maybe this gives me a wine building? It does! A tincture. Alright, I'm gonna pick that. That's a no-brainer. So now I can make wine to be able to supply the um, guild house so that I can, um, you know, supply luxury needs. And also, the tincture makes dyes better than anywhere else as well. That's actually the main purpose of this building. So, we'll make our dyes here too. Meaning, I need to turn the dyes off at the cookhouse. And make sure it's also off at the smelter. It's off at the smelter. Uh, where's the cookhouse? That's smokehouse. Where's cookhouse? Here it is. Dies are off. All right, cool. All right, you voted for Utopia. Fulfilling jerky pie and skewers. Do I know how to make... So I know how to make jerky, right? So here's skewers. I'm making skewers at the, um, at the cookhouse. I'm making jerky at the smokehouse. Um, do I know how to make pie? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's gonna be like that, huh? Huh, chat? You you didn't know. If I didn't know, you didn't know. Can't blame you. Alright, the convicts are arrested. The boat is nearly salvaged. Uh I'm I'm doing it. Full send. Straight into a forbidden. Just hold me, because this is going to be rough. It usually is. It's a lightning catcher. So I can burn it down, but working on it will uh, raise hostility by what? 400? Oh, Lord. Or I can try to fix it with materials I don't have. Um... And materials I can't reasonably in a given amount of time produce. So I really only have the choice to burn it down, but that raises my hostility... ...rough. Let's just leave it like that. Rough. Uh, there's also two other caches, and then if I don't do it... ...um... ...it will blow up four of my buildings. <laughs> okay. And, chat, I see you chanting to make it even harder for me to resolve it. I'm on to you. I ain't blind to that. Alright, so everything down here is salvaged. My hostility is obscene. Um, the other thing I could be doing is trying to, like, micromanage my, um... Let's try to make more jerky. 
I can try to micromanage my needs to go high resolve, to try to push my high resolve. I'm really surprised I haven't had the option to build more service buildings. Um, that's a bit of a bummer because getting high resolve service fulfillment would push me over the, um, the need. The other thing I do is um, just take the loss of having stuff blow up because the hostility uh, <laughs> that I'll that I'll incur, unless I do like crazy hearth sacrifices, which I don't have a lot of fuel, so like that's not a viable solution. Um, losing four buildings might be my best bet. Is what I'm trying to say. I might just eat the cost of getting yeeted by Zeus. Oh, this mine is dead. Hmm. Um. Here. The other thing that would be nice is if, like, What's her name? Oh, you know, maybe I can force it. Oh, yes, I can. You're going to hate me. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't eat roots anymore. And don't cook roots. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to pause, go through all of my everything. And make sure I'm not using roots anywhere as a raw reagent. Like I am here. Don't do that. Use broccoli. In fact, I don't even know if you're... Yeah, stop using those roots. You can see what I'm doing here. The next trader that it was happening... Oh my god, she doesn't carry roots. She normally does. Oh, never mind. My big brain play is not big brained anymore. I was going to buy roots off of her and fulfill my uh, beaver influx. But I know she's just like, oh, I saw your plan. So F your face, you don't get to do that. Well, um, Fooey. Just buy a bunch of raw ingredients so that I can do some cooking. Yes. Alright, uh... Alternative idea. The lightning rod is gonna murder me. Uh, I'm okay with that already. Let's make it worse. Go, go, go! Break another forbidden glade! Maybe the solution is behind door number two. Probably won't be. I'll probably die. But like, you know, I'll die with in style or something. Mm -hmm. Here, you sell me your this. Yes. At least we'll die hungry. I mean, fulfilled. I mean, I could still try to burn this down. But I think the hostility that I'll incur is going to be ridiculous. Um, because as soon as I hit Devastating Storms, for minus 20 global resolve during storm time, like, oof, forget it. Oh, right, I have my new mine up. Um, slowing down time a little bit. 
I actually don't have a lot of uh, beavers. It's fine. Okay, we have got a hungry mistworm. I could feed the hungry mistworm. Doing that would make it impossible to see past the trees. Yeah, that's fine. And that is an empathy decision that fulfills one of my two empathies. And then, um, to make matters worse... I'm gonna burn this down. So now my hostility is eight. <laughs> oh boy. And, uh, let's, let's make it even worse. Uh, where is the next f forbidden? Oh, right, I can't... So here's what's funny. I can't see it, but I can see it because of your names. Yeah, Forest Guardians. I'm on to you. I can see through... I can x-ray you. So yeah, I can see Forest Guardian over there. Alright, so that's the one I'm gonna burn through. Belfier, I'm coming for you. Can't stop me. Well, I mean, I guess I could lose, but... Hope you don't stop me. So there's a temple over here that I could... Like, build for incense or whatever, but, you know, whatever. Uh, let's just break open a whole bunch of things. Why not? How many? Oh, I have lots of stone. No, oh, no, no, no. I have something better for you to do. You work in the uh, the coal mines. Enjoy miner's lung. Miner's lung, miner's lung. All right, so I'm doing two forbidden ones at once. I have an hostility of seven. Uh, I have one extra second. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah ah! Eat it, chat. Eat it. I see you trying to slow me down by 30%, but look at that. 4, 13, 4, 11. Two extra seconds. Mm, 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 mm. Can't stop. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what did I do? Uh, Yeah, more angry, angry. So doing the forbidden ritual kills someone at random or tearing it down creates blight rot cysts everywhere. Uh, okay. I guess we'll go with option A. So I'm getting a blight rot post. Actually, let's move this closer to town. Getting a blight rot post so that I can burn the blot blight rot. I'll probably end up winning before then. Oh, but, um, so the this map, because it has, like, super good deposits. So here is the super good deposit here. It's ancient proto-wheat. It's kind of a pointless deposit, given that I have grain line deliveries. But, like, it has 999 charges, effectively infinite. And then the other one is a dead leviathan. For meat. If you wanted an enormous amount of meat. Look at that thing. You Would you eat that? I wouldn't eat that. And then this one has... Where is it? Oh, this was not a... Um, this wasn't a, a souped up one. You're just a baby. It's fermented like salami? Uh, if you say so. What's crazy is I don't have an oil press yet. That's... impressive. <laughs> so I'm gonna build an oil press. Uh, is there someone free that could do float? Yeah, you. You're fired. Also, what's mad is, like, I, I found one fertile plot. That's not a lot. Uh, you cut down trees. No, oh, there's uh, mushrooms to collect. Or, uh, yeah, mushrooms. And another crate to pop open for some wildfire essence. So I'm popping a whole lot of crates, which is supplementing, like, supplies. In fact, I have stupid amounts of food, 
because you forest guardians aren't destroying my food. I gotta say that destroying food chant that you can do is so powerful. It's so much stronger than any council of elders or anything. By like a lot. So there we go. The lightning catcher has been neutralized with two seconds to spare. Uh, reminds me of that game like, um, like, uh, God, what is it called? Keep talk, keep talking, and nobody explodes. Yeah. That lightning catcher almost blew up in my face. Um, the Blight Rot post is all set to go. So I'm going to uh, queue up some some purging fire. And then the time to neutralize that is cometh. So I'm going to reduce the amount of people working in the hungry mistworm and the lightning catcher. And instead start... Tearing down the Altar of Decay. Yusa! I don't care. Go away. What's the shortcut I'm using to fill all slots of buildings? Holding shift. Which also lets you fire everyone, too. So, like, if I wanted to fill all the all the um uh the beavers i could do that and there's also this queue where you can unassign lumber cutters and everything by uh just clicking that button because it's a bit of a meta to fire all your lumber cutters right at the start of a storm so that you don't have um you don't have added extra hostility one of my favorite ways to, like, keep the fires going is to have, like, grain line and then just make that into oil. Um, so... Let's make a hundred oil here. And then, for me to make this warehouse, I need to break... Don't I have two woodcutter camps? I thought I had two woodcutter camps. Yeah, I don't need this. I'm going to get rid of the forager camp. For parts back. I'm not too worried about low resolve. I don't think they're going to leave in time. Calculated risk. And I am very close to winning, so all I really need to do is to treat people well for a little bit, and they'll be like, oh, cool. Decline. Yeah, everyone's high resolve, so, yeah, this is in the bag. In fact, I get exactly the amount of resolve I need to win by just waiting for one minute. There we go. No strangers. So I never uh, added people from encampments. I won through resolve. Five of my rep points. Re wow, that's surprising. I didn't realize five of my rep points were from resolve. Did the march lands, completed ten orders, and discovered ten glades. That was a that was a spicy one. That took a while. And. Uh, Oh, I don't have to end cycle. I mean, I don't have enough time to do a full one. But once you do enough settlements here, and obviously I'm not going to be able to go all the way out to the bronze seal uh, before the end of the cycle, then you end the cycle and you have to kind of restart. Um, so with my remaining time, let's go over some of the new game mechanics. So I'm just going to quickly blow through the rewards for experience and cosmetics. So now I'm level six. Uh, some of the cosmetics you get are to um, decorate your home. And then a lot of them are for building aesthetics and, and harmony stuff in your colonies. Um, so the new mechanics, because I haven't really explained. When you complete zoning, as you can see, one of the rewards is these fragments. These uh, seal fragments. 
Uh, here they are. So a silver fragment are shards um, that are needed to venture into the sealed forest at the end of every cycle to reforge the ancient seal. So these are the ancient seals. And to get the bronze seal, I would need uh, at least four seal fragments. So you need to obtain these seal fragments from completing normal towns to then be able to forge new seals. And there's a bunch of different seals to um, to unlock. So I think I can like glean them through the deeds here. Uh, seal. So bronze seal, lead seal, silver seal, gold seal, platinum seal, cobalt seal, titanium seal, adamantine seal. Right. So it's not a spoiler because I can show you them through deeds. Um, so there is an overall goal where you obtain these seal fragments to unlock the seals. And the I didn't show you these maps because I didn't get all the way out there, but they aren't normal maps. You can't win until you fulfill a whole bunch of special order conditions. So it's not about reputation for winning. It's about unlocking the seal. So when you go into the map, there is still Queen's Impatience and Reputation for getting blueprints and losing. But uh, you win by unlocking the seal fully. And um, one of the benefits is when you unlock the seal, as you can see, you get more Citadel resources at the end of the cycle. And also the cycle dur duration increases, allowing you to venture deeper into the wilds for bigger risk and bigger reward. So there's a gameplay loop where when you level up, you gain more of the um, more of the upgrades, making you stronger. But then as you gain the seals, and this is part of the gameplay loop that I really love. Before this update, like before the DLC, like the gameplay loop was great, but now it's like really dynamic because you gain these seals to be able to venture deeper and the deeper you go, the harder it gets. So you get stronger as you level up and then as you level up, you unlock seals, which makes the game harder, which makes you stronger. It's just, it's great. Um, so I've been having a lot of fun with that. And any of the seals that you don't use, so if you just want to seal collect, like kind of like I did, where I ventured around a little bit, um, they turn into, uh, you sell them back to the crown for resources for upgrades. So getting extra seal fragments is not a bad thing. Uh, the other thing that I, I didn't show, but some of these zones, have um, special conditions. So they'll offer you machinery or artifacts. So like this ruin here, if I had done a colony near the ruin, would give me machinery. As you can see, the symbol of machinery there. Um, and there are deeds for just about every special condition. So there's like deed for like watchtowers and a deed for the uh, ruins and deeds for all of the special um, points of interest here. And you can track them all in your deed tracker. So if I wanted to track the deeds for like a watchtower, I could just type watch, track, and then with that tracked, when I go back out to the map, I can see, hey, win a game near a watchtower modifier. And I actually really like watchtower modifiers because it um, doesn't increase your hostility when you open glades. So you can just slam glades open like crazy, especially the small ones that don't have threats and there's no penalty to it. So that, that's kind of a fun one because it really dynamically changes the, uh, the gameplay mechanics where you have to, you know, essentially population and glade opening and time elapsed increases hostility. But when you remove one of those three checks, it really changes things a lot. So I've I've done a watchtower run where I focused on like removing hostility. So I was on like year eight with still hostility zero because I had been doing like empathy, empathy things to lower my hostility and like silent looting things to lower my hostility and buying lower hostility books. So I, I had like a massive colony and so many glades open and no hostility at all. It was really funny. But um, this friends is where I'm gonna leave off because I don't have enough time to, um, to show any more content. And I'm a bit bummed out that my, my one, I mean, it's not a complaint that the frogs, the, the species that they add in so the species that I have not yet shown you would be foxes and frogs. Um, and frogs is the... Uh, frogs are the ones added in with the DLC. So foxes 
are really good at interacting with um, with caches and events. They're faster at it. Um, and they, um, as hearth controllers, they lower hostility from opened up glades. So they're like creatures of the forest. And then the frogs are really good stone workers and they provide very strong bonuses and, and upgrades to buildings. Uh, but all of that is required at level 13. So the problem is, like, with the four hours that I played, I made it up to, like, level 6. Level 13 is uh, well, a bit further out. But you can see that the um, the frog stuff is is beyond here. So it's, it's interesting that they added a DLC, which uh, all of the meat of that content, uh, you'd have to play probably, like, a good mm, 15 hours or so just to get to that point. But it's worth it. Um, in prepping for this stream, um, you know, I can say it, 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 it's been a lot of fun. And I, I also really like the Coastal Grove um, mechanics for the Striders. I, I, I couldn't show you more Strider stuff, uh, mostly because chat was trying to obliterate my food supply, so I couldn't actually run the Striders. But the Striders also introduce really cool, like, I don't want to call them gacha or loot box mechanics, but that's basically what it is. Put in food, get in, get out random resources. But it makes you a lot less reliant upon um, the trade caravans and, and Queen's influence for blueprints. So if you want to go rogue, the Strider is a really good rogue mechanic where you can just say, hey, Queen, you know, I don't care. I'm going to win by high resolve and, and I'm going to steal all my blueprints from the Strider. All right. But that brings me to the end of the stream. Thank you for tuning in to Against the Storm, Keepers of the Stone, which originally streamed live on Twitch September 27th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Twitch subscribers, Patreon patrons, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Viceroys.